Good morning. Our lesson for today is order of operations and we're going to get started with defining some vocabulary and then practicing some problems and looking at all the steps of order of operations. One of the first words that you'll see when you see an order of operations problem is the word simplify. And a synonym for simplify is just to solve the order of operations problem till you get it in its most simple form. You want to get it most of the time just with one answer. Another word that you might see that tells you to simplify is the word evaluate. Many times a textbook example or even a test will say to evaluate the problem that they're giving you and that's another way of saying simplify or solve. So those are some words that you need to understand when, when we're looking at order of operations. One of the first steps in order of operations when you when you look at the mnemonic device that we'll talk about later is being able to solve exponents. <clears throat> this is an example of an exponent. We're raising this number to a power and lots of times I like to say I've got the power and the power in this exponential expression is the exponent. The exponent tells the base how many times to multiply itself to itself. So this we would read as 3 to the fourth power or 3 to the power of 4. So we can read that either way. It, both of those are fine. And what that means is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And actually 3 times 3 we can work it two we can work it all the way across or we can work it in any order because of the commutative property which says that we can multiply in any order and still get the same answer. So we can do this. We can say 3 times 3 is 9 and then 3 times 3 is 9 and 9 times 9 is 81. So that's the that is the solution to um, this exponential expression. So this is the solution. This is how we would simplify it or evaluate it or just solve. Sometimes it might even say what is the value of this exponential expression. So the value would be 81. Here are some examples of some exponential expressions. This first one is 3 to the second power or 3 squared, or 3 to the power of 2. Most of the time when we see a 2 as an exponent, we will say squared. And this is what that would look like. If we took this little tile here, and we took the tile and we divided it by 3 on each side, okay, we have a 3 by 3 square, and 3 times 3 then is? nine. Okay. Now that one wasn't wasn't too bad. We can do that pretty quickly. If we factored this out as sometimes you'll see um, it might say write this exponential expression as factors. Well factors are just numbers that you multiply together so you would write three times three equals nine and then nine is the value of your exponential expression or your answer. So three squared is the same as 3 times 3 or 9. Now, on 4 to the 5th power, you could write 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Okay, that's a whole lot of writing there to solve this problem. Or you might even want to put that in the calculator. It's very simple to put it in the calculator, but sometimes we need a little help remembering that. So we're going to pull the calculator down now and turn it on and there you see the cursor up in the window there and we're going to say 4 to the fifth power. Now if you can if you want you can say 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 and then enter and that equals 1024. Well that seems like a whole lot of things to type in the calculator and so you know if you had like 4 to the 10th power or 4 to the 8th power it, you'd have to remember how many 4's you put in and all that so there's an easier way. Calculators make our lives easier. So here what we're going to do is put 4 and use the caret button that's right here 
to the fifth power and you'll notice that we get the exact same answer. So we've written this as factors and gotten 1024 or we've just put it in the calculator 4 to the fifth power and we also get 1024. Now the next problem here is 6 to the first power and if as I told you before the exponent tells you how many times to multiply the 6 to itself. So if we say 6 to itself one time we're not multiplying it by anything, we just have 6. If you want to look at that in the calculator, you would say 6, caret button, sometimes called the to the button, to the first power equals, and you'll notice that that is 6 right there. Now the next one is 15 to the 0 power, and we think a lot in multiplication that any time thing times zero is zero, but this isn't exactly the same concept because you're raising 15 to the zero power. And I know later on in math you're going to talk about the proof that why the answer is always what it is. And if you put 15 to the zero power into your calculator, you're going to get one. So 15 to the zero power the value of that expression is 1. No matter what number we use, my favorite number is 7. 7 to the 0 power is 1. 13 to the 0 power is 1. So that's just a rule we need to memorize right now that anything raised to the 0 power is 1. And so that's, that's the first part of the order of operations, understanding how to solve exponential problems. So we saw the squared there. This is 3 to the second power. 3 times 3 is 9. We saw this problem factored out, written in its factor form. And then we also learned that we can put that in the calculator using the base first, 4 to the fifth power, putting the exponent in there, and then finding the answer. Now, as you noticed before, I talked about... Um, 3 squared or 3 to the second power as saying that is squared. Here's an ex 4 squared which would be the same as taking this square this tile and I have four sections on each side. You'll have to excuse my drawing I'm not exactly perfect there but you'll see that there's 4 here by 4 here and every time you have a squared exponent, whether it's 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, etc., when you're multiplying it twice, a number by to itself, 2 times, 4 times 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. And what you'll see is that 16 is often called a perfect square perfect square. Just like the number 25, if you look at 25, we can say that 25 is equal to 5 times 5. That means the same number times itself and we get 25. So here's a picture of 4 squared. Now on this next part, and remember that we can call this squared. I'm going to write squared up there so you can remember that that's squared. Whoops. On the next part here, we have 5 to the third power. Now, many times when you see 5 to the third power, most people would just say 5 cubed, kind of like a shorthand shortcut in math. When we think of cubed, we think of an actual cubed. Anything raised to the third power is cubed because and you'll see this when you talk about area here and then when you talk about volume but we're working with the length the width and then the height of an object when we're talking about cubic um, measurements okay so this would be 5 cubed so we'd have 5 would be the length 5 would be the well, actually, 5 would be the length here. That's the length. Um, the width would be here, and this would be the height. Okay, so I'm just circling those. So it's 5 by 5 by 5. So 5 times 5 is 25, and then times 5 again would be 125. Okay, so that would be the volume of this, and we would say the volume in, in cubic inches or centimeters or whatever the measurement would be. But for just for right now, you'll get to this later on in math, 
just for right now, it's it's okay for you to understand that four square four to the second power squared and any number to the third power is cubed. So Anytime you see a 2 as an exponent, you can read it as squared. Anytime you see a 3 as an exponent, you can read it as cubed. All right, so now we've gotten our exponents, <coughs> our exponents down. And we're going to look at a problem using the order of operations. And mathematicians decided upon order of operations so that people would get the same answer. Because I could let you solve this in the classroom and without giving you any instructions of, to the order of operations we might all get different numbers and different answers so if let me put this in the calculator and this is where your calculator is going to come in come in handy I'm going to clear it out there and <clears throat> When we put this in here, it's very, very, very important to put it in exactly like it's written. And one thing I noticed that I did before is I used an X for times, okay? But you can also use a raised dot. That also means multiply. Or even if you have, like up here, if I put 2 and then a 3 in parentheses, that means 2 groups of 3 or 2 times 3. So I needed to go back and let you know that. Alright, so when we see this, it says simplify the following expression. Remember that simplify means that we're going to solve it. We're going to make it as simple as we can in the simplest form that we can. And expression is just a group of numbers with addition or subtraction or multiplication or division without an equal sign. Okay, so now here we go and we're going to solve this. If we do not use order of operations, we might try to solve this problem just straight across. Okay? So if we just solve this problem straight across, we would say 25 subtract 8. Well, I like to do that as 25 subtract 10. And 25 subtract 10 would be 15, but I didn't exactly subtract 10, so I'm going to add 2 back, and that would be 17. Okay? And then what if I multiply that? So, so I did this part first, and now I'm going to multiply that by 2. And I'm going to go ahead and write the rest of this out so you'll see um, how I'm doing this. <clears throat> so now if I say 17 times 2, well I know that's 34 plus 3 squared minus 5 plus 2. Okay? Well, I can't exactly add 3 squared. So I'm, I'm right here at this point I'm going to have to say that 3 squared is equal to 9 because that's the same as 3 times 3, right? So 34 plus 9 minus 5 plus 2. And I'm going to keep that in parentheses. So 34 plus 9 is almost like 34 plus 10, but one less. So 34 plus 9 would be 43. Okay. Minus 5 plus 2. Well, if I'm not observing the order of operations, I might say 43 minus 5. Well, that is 38. And then 38 plus 2 would be 40. But when I go to check that problem, using my calculator and remembering that I have to type it into my calculator exactly like it's written there. I would say 25 subtract 8 times 2 plus 3 squared subtract parentheses 5 plus 2 close my parentheses. So I put, I put that problem in there and you can see it there. 25 subtract 8 times 2 plus 3 squared minus 5 plus 2, and that's in parentheses, and you get 11. Well, how can that answer be so different? Well, the reason it's different is because the calculator followed the order of operations. But here, we didn't. We just worked the problem from left to right. So why does it matter that we got two different answers? Well, order of operations has a specific process. Why do we have a process? Well, you might want to ask a skydiver. Ask skydivers how they feel about using the same process to pack their parachutes every time. Well, if they just one day got a little lazy and decided just to throw their parachutes in their sh parachute, pack it up and just throw it in there, it might not work. They might not get the correct result, which would uh, plummet them to the earth. So they would make a, a permanent... Uh, permanent impression on their surface there. So we need a process. What if a chef decided to use different techniques every time for preparing the, the single dish that she made? 
So every time a chef's going to prepare a dish, they're just going to try something different. They're going to throw something different in there and, and try this and try that. What's going to happen? Well, sometimes... Mmm, it's going to be great. They added just the correct amount of spice and it's going to be fabulous. Other times what might happen, ew, that's a great picture, isn't it? Other times you might get a little food poisoning and uh, be losing your lunch or whatever. The inside of your stomach looks pretty gross, doesn't it? Okay, so there's a process to order of operations. There's something that we follow every time we see an order of operation problem. And this... Um, is the basis of what you're going to be doing. Every time you see an equation, you're going to have to have that order of operations in the back of your mind. Well, do I multiply first? Do I divide first? What, what am I going to do first? And this is an order of operations pyramid. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. What most people make mistakes on is right here. Very simple problems. Simple, simple problems such as 3 plus 2 times 5. People will miss that problem and say that the answer is 25 because they have not multiplied first. Okay. Another thing that um, people might do is because they, they um, know a mnemonic device, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, they just think multiplication always comes first. In this instance, multiplication does not come first because division is first. And you'll notice these arrows here, left to right. So multiplication and division are done in order from left to right, just like you read from left to right. Here is the same thing with addition and subtraction, from left to right. Okay, And I like to think of this as I'm, I'm walking down the hallway with someone and we'll say that uh, Jack and Jill are walking down the hallway. Well, if I'm walking toward them, I see Jack on this side and I see Jill on this side. So I see Jack on the left and Jill on the right. Well, if I'm coming from this side, I'm walking behind them, I see Jill on the left and Jack on the right. It's still Jack and Jill. They haven't changed who they are, but they're just in a different order. It, it, the, the, um, the operation of the person stayed the same, but they're in a different order there. And a lot of um, teachers, including myself, we use this mnemonic device, which I referred to earlier. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, when I first started using this mnemonic device, I would put it all the way down the board. Every word would have their own little spot on the board. But then I realized that when I did that, students would forget that multiplication and division were from left to right. And that addition and subtraction were from left to right. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is a mnemonic device that, that I use to help me remember the order of operations. I also use a little, a little song to help me remember the order of operations. And I'll just, um, it, it's parentheses and then exponents, multiply, divide, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide. Add, subtract from left to right in order to operate. Okay, and it's to the tune of rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. But I'll go ahead and uh, just sing this to you um, right now. So maybe it'll get stuck in your head and you can even teach it to a younger brother or sister so they can learn it as well, okay? But it goes, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract from left to right to right in order to operate. I'll do it one more time for you. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract from left to right to right in order to operate. There are even hand motions that you can do with that. Um, and you can you can make up your own or make up your own on your own song. And that will help you remember it. 
okay the order of operations but remember it's a specific order and there's a purpose so that we all get the right answer all right let's solve a few problems using the order of operations and this is the example that we'd already done so I'm going to skip over this one and we remember that the answer is 11 actually I won't skip over it let's go ahead and solve it the correct way the long way without using the calculator alright so if we have pr pr please excuse my dear aunt Sally or parentheses exponents multiply divide add subtract from left to right um, we're gonna start with parentheses and so when we look at this problem and I'm gonna use different color markers this time to help us um, solve it when we look at this problem the first thing that we're gonna do is parentheses okay and we're going to go ahead and mark that across the top. That's one of the steps that I use when, when I teach this to my whole class. Is we're going to, first we're going to do parentheses. What is the second thing we're going to do? Parentheses, then exponent. So I'm going to put a little bitty 2 right there and circle it so that you see that that's the second thing we're going to do. Parentheses, exponents, and then what do we see from left to right? Well, we see some multiplication. So the third thing we're going to do is multiply parentheses exponents multiply or divide we didn't have any division and now we're going to add and subtract from left to right well if we look from left to right not just add and then subtract but from left to right this subtraction takes first we're going to take do that one first then the addition and then this problem so there's six steps to simplify this expression now so let's just go ahead and do that. Let's do step one. Step one says five plus two. We know that five plus two is seven. That's right. So we have 25 minus eight times two plus three squared minus seven. And notice I dropped the parentheses there now because I've already solved that. We said that the second step that we were going to do is multiply or solve our exponent initial problem. So that was 3 squared. So we have 25 minus 8 times 2 plus what's 3 squared or 3 times 3 is 9 minus 7. So we've done that step. So we've done step 1 and step 2. Now let's look at step 3. Step 3 was the multiplication right here of 8 times 2. So we have 25 minus 16 plus 9 minus 7. And how did I get that 16? Well, 8 times 2 is 16. And you know that. All right. The next step we have, we've done step 1, 2, 3, and now we're on step 4. And step 4 is now 25 minus 16. So 25 minus 16. I'll give you a second to figure that out. You can either start at 16 and count up. You can say 25 minus 10 and then minus 6. But either way, when you say 25 minus 16, however way you decide to solve that, you're going to get 9. So now we have 9 plus 9 minus 7. Okay. We have 9 plus 9 minus 7. We're working from left to right. So now this time we have 9 plus 9, which is 18, minus 7. And our last step is 18 minus 7, which is 11. And if we remember from before, or we can go ahead and put that back in the calculator again. Oh, well, there it is. It showed up already. 25 minus 8 times 2 plus 3 to the second power, 3 squared, minus 5 plus 2 in parentheses is 11. Now, the calculator saved us a whole lot of time, didn't it? We can just punch that in. But remember when you're putting something in the calculator, you have to put it in just like it's written. If we don't put it in the calculator correctly, then we'll get the wrong answer if we leave out the parentheses. So let me just show you that. What happens if we leave out the parentheses? So we have 25 minus 8 times 2 plus 3 squared minus 5 plus 2. So that means it won't do that 5 plus 2 first. It'll actually be doing that last and look at the answer. It's 15. So even though mathematically you've done the operations correctly, you've done the, the computation correctly, you haven't done the steps correctly. Okay, So it's very important to follow the order of operations so you get the right answer. When you look at writing this problem out here, 
you'll notice that it kind of forms a funnel and so your answer ends up there at the bottom and we wrote every step out so that we were we made sure that every time um, we were going one step at a time and I changed colors on us so that we could see each step as we went 